What's going on everybody? King of Dragons 5000 here coming at you with another figure review. Today we'll be having a look at the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse The Flash from CW's The Flash. And so here we have the Flash posing out of the packaging. Before we take a look at the figure, let's actually run through what he comes with. The Flash does come with three different lightning effects. We do have two that do go into his hands really nicely. And then we do get a third lightning effect that goes around his body, as well as your standard McFarland display stand. Other than that, the Flash doesn't come with any other accessories, so with that out of the way, let's take a closer look at the Flash. And so here we have a closer look at the CW Flash, and I think McFarland has done a pretty decent job with this figure. Now, it's not 100% likeness to Grand Gust, and I still feel like the head is the wrong shape. It might be just because of how his helmet is designed. I'm, it's actually a mask, not a helmet. Um, uh, I, I really didn't keep up with Flash past season six, I believe it was the one where that had um, what was his name, Cicada? I yeah, I gave up halfway through that because it just got ridiculously bad. But yeah, we do have the Flash here, and I really do like the way the costume looked. They did improve the costume over time, which I am really happy about. Writing wise, it's still not up to snuff, but yeah, the costume here looks really nice, and I think what's throwing me off is that the chin is a little bit too thick. If it was a little bit thinner, I think I would like this a little bit more, but yeah, as it stands, the chin is a little bit too thick. Really do like the flash here, although I do feel like the lightning bolts on mine are attached at the wrong angle. I feel like they should be further back not going up. I don't think that's how it was in the show, but yeah, I believe mine are attached wrong, and I do like the way the costume looks. They did a really good job with the detailing here. As you can see, it has a lot of good detailing going around it, and like I said, one thing I did enjoy about the Flash TV show is that the suit got progressively better despite the fact that there were still some issues with it. I still like it. I like these gold uh, border stripes that we have on it. They look really nice. It does break up the red here and it does simulate the yellow that we have on the rebirth and the what was it the reborn flash really do like the different textures right here we have like a leather texture right here and then we have like a kevlar texture right here one thing i'm not a fan of is the way mcfarland designed this abdomen joint now the prototype on this figure actually showed this figure having a much cleaner abdomen joint right here. I don't know if you guys know, but the prototype of this figure did not have these spikes coming out of his abdomen, which I'm really disappointed that they actually added this in. I don't know why. This actually has a nice sculpt underneath those jowls. So again, why did McFarlane go the extra distance to add this when it wasn't necessary i'm gonna have to pull a, a what was it detective comics batman and just cut that off like i did with batman but yeah that's a customization for a future video but overall i do like the costume once again the difference in textures look really nice and you can see right here we do have some gold for his lightning bolts. The belt was always one of my favorite parts of the Flash's costume. I think it's a very good uh, belt piece looking really nice and then we do have his pants which again carry over the gold uh, piping. Then we have this texture right here on the side which is very different from the leather that we have here. A little disappointed that they didn't include the what was it the striping that helps with the knee mobility it's kind of just wrinkled right there the actual costume kind of had like slits in the leather where you had uh, the leather and then the fabric underneath that just to help with mobility because this is an action figure of course it's not going to have that same texturing and I think the greatest offender of the Flash costume was always the boots I have no idea why it took them so long to give the Flash gold boots they kind of have like the inclination that they these could have been gold. You can see that they are separate boot pieces, but yeah, never understood why the Flash costume always had red boots and mm, really, really disappointed that this figure also carries over the red boots. Yeah, they have that little gold peak right here, but I would have preferred the gold boots. Hopefully we get a reverse Flash from the first few seasons. I don't like his comic accurate suit, I'll be 100% honest. 
but yeah the suit does look really nice aside from the red boots which they did rectify that in later seasons but this figure does have the red boots still i want to say this is figures from season seven i like i said i stopped watching the flash midway through season six with cicada i thought the writing got very atrocious and just because i didn't go i just glanced over it Mine does have this little uh, glue stain right here on it. Unfortunately, I did try to take some alcohol to rub that off. It might need another alcohol session. But yeah, that is a little bit of an issue. And one thing I do love, that emblem. It looks gorgeous. So overall, the Flash here is a pretty nice looking figure. If you ignore the, the red boots, which that's something that they did. They kept doing it. And I have no idea why they didn't change it sooner. So with that out of the way, guys, that's how you get the Flash compared to other figures you may have in your collection. And so here we have the Flash posed next to a Marvel Legends Cyclops and a DC Multiverse Superman. Here we have the Flash posed next to a WWE Elite Scale figure and a Mezco 112 Collective Popeye the Sailor Man. Here we do have the Flash posed next to a Lightning Collection White Ranger and a Star Wars Black Series Mandalorian. And for one final comparison, here we do have the CW Flash posed next to the Injustice 2 Flash and the Zack Snyder's Justice League Flash. So with the comparisons out of the way, let's actually have a look at the Flash's articulation. Now he does have a double ball drain in the head which does let him look up really nicely. He does look down very well as well, so that's really nice. And then we do get some really good head tilt going to each side. And then we do have rotation left and right. He does have a ball drain connecting his shoulders into his torso, but unfortunately we don't get too much movement out of that. You can see we don't get much forward or back, up or down movement. We do get out to the side to about right there. It's a little less than horizontal, which is a little bit unfortunate, but he has no problems going all the way around. He does have a bicep swivel double bend here at the elbow we do have a swivel hinge here at the wrist as well as rotation and it does rotate on that pin as well we do have a ball joint here in the torso as you can see it does lean back quite a bit goes forward it, uh, to be quite honest I feel like this would go much further if these jowls weren't there it kind of looks like a bulldog jowl so yeah those are gonna end up being cut at some point and thankfully there's like a line for me to follow there so yeah look forward to those tips later it does rotate side to side as well as some tilt we do have another ball joint here at the waist going side to side rotates as well then he does kick forward to about right there which is pretty impressive kicks back only to about right there out to the side very nicely we do have a thigh swivel up high which it does w function really well i do like that and then we do have a double bend here at the knee going very far back he actually kicks his lower back can you believe that flash is a very flexible man so then he also does have a rotation here at his ankle he has a hinge which goes back and forward forward facing pin for rocker ankle and then we can rotate that to give him a true rocker ankle and then finally he has a very generous toe hinge so overall the flash has some pretty good articulation so with that out of the way let's actually get him posed for my final thoughts and then we'll wrap up this review and so here we have the McFarlane Toys CW Flash pose for my final thoughts and overall I really do like the way this Flash came out. I think this is miles and miles above the green arrow that they gave us when they started the line. That figure was hideously atrocious and I still hate it to this day. They really did up their game with this CW version of the Flash. He does still have his issues though, don't get me wrong. It's not a costume that I'm a fan of. I think his season, what was it, 8? Season 9? I don't even know what season they're on but the one where he has the gold boots is a most superior flash costume and the fact that they were able to give us such an updated flash costume is really nice although like i said i would have much preferred the brighter red with the gold boots i think that is the definitive flash costume overall they did a good job with this minus the fact that he still has the jowls now one thing i don't like about this figure is the way his lightning attachments work his lightning effect piece does go over his head nicely but then the ones that he holds um i get what they were going for when he throws the lightning bolt but it really doesn't work in the context of him running so you're basically gonna have him with the one that goes over his head around his chest and that's pretty much it now you can use the godspeed effects for him as well 
but they do fit on him rather loose so do keep that in mind if you do use the godspeed effect pieces the flash here is still a really solid figure and i did pick up mine from walmart i did find this flash on the shelves and he will run you about 19 dollars although when i picked him up Walmart was charging $21 for this figure. Now, Walmart has lowered their prices back down to $19.99. I have no idea why they mark these up. Uh, I am glad that they didn't mark them down because I don't like paying more than $20 for a McFarland figure. The articulation is good. The sculpt is good, but they don't have the greatest paint apps. If they had better paint apps, I would definitely pay more than $20 for these figures. But lacking paint, it's one of those things that, yeah, without the right paint job, this is a $20 figure. If you can find this Flash in stores, I really do recommend you pick them up. If you're a fan of the Grand Gustin Flash, do check this figure out. If you're not a fan of that comic book Flash, or that CW Flash, you can kind of fudge them into your Justice League Flash if you don't want to use the Ezra Miller Flash, which I honestly don't blame you guys if you don't. This is still a really solid figure in its own right, so if you don't already have this figure, I really do recommend you pick them up. With that being said guys, I'm King of Dragons 5000. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel. Go ahead and check out all my other action figure reviews as well as all my other McFarland videos. Hopefully you find them informative. As always, if there's a figure you would like to see me review, let me know down in the comments. And if it's in my collection, I'll gladly have a look at it. While you're at it, check out my Instagram account for new and exciting action figure photos. And as always, ring that bell to be notified every time I upload a video. Until next time guys, I'll see you later. Take care, everyone.